Welcome to Gulfstream today and beautiful Gulfstream Park, Ron Coletti, along with Acacia Courtney. And it is a uh, nice day here in South Florida. We're in the fast main track, firm turf course. Uh, gave all our carryovers away, so we're starting everything anew here on Wednesday afternoon. We got a nine race card, so it should be a lot of fun. And uh, is it afternoon? Yes, good afternoon. It is good afternoon. <laughs> and as you said, we gave all of our carryovers away. So turning a new page today on Wednesday. Hopefully you had a good weekend. But even if you didn't, you get a chance to start fresh today. Yeah, we got a pretty nice card here, and we got the first race is going to be on the turf. Oh, wait, we're going to talk about our bet it, our, our strategy, just because we gave what are you the doing, money. Ronnie? I forgot. First race, we always start with the pick five, the okay. rolling super high five, actually. We start with that in the first race, along with the 50 cent pick five, the first one of two on the afternoon. Now you see it, the race is one through Five, and then we have the Rainbow Six starting anew, as we just mentioned. And that's why I forgot this. Mm -hmm. In race number four this afternoon, we have that nine race card. And then in race number five, we have the final pick five of the afternoon. And you'll have a ticket this afternoon. So I, I know you were doing your homework and uh, put a ticket together for the late pick five. I will. Yes, I will have a late pick five ticket. I believe that you'll be doing the Rainbow Six. So we'll have some good options for you there. Yeah, it was kind of nice. I got to handicap the races on the beach yesterday. That's it. That's I can honestly say I've never done that before. <laughs> well, that's that's the beauty of uh, of being able to uh, live in South Florida, live and work in South Florida, get to go to the beach. And boy, has the weather been spectacular that's over nice. the last couple of weeks here. We did have one rainy day. Uh, didn't really affect anything here. We got that fast main track, firm turf course. Now we'll get into the Wednesday card first. There's seven and a half furlongs on the turf. Maiden claim is three and up, $12,500. A clean slate in here, no scratches or jockey changes to report. Okay, she, you started it off here with the number seven, Acknowledge. I did, and it looks like you used this horse second. So this will be the third race for Acknowledge without the blinkers, and I think that uh, he's really improved in his last couple of starts. Started out off the turf, moved over to the turf, took the blinkers off, a lot of changes, and it just looks like he's finally finding his stride here. I think with the blinkers off, he'll, ho he'll also sit a little bit behind the pace, which in this kind of race where there are a couple horses that look like they might go to the front, that'll be beneficial beneficial for acknowledge well part of the Italian code if a horse has pasta in it I have to pick it so I put the number five pasta Giovanni on top of my ticket this one dropping a notch turning back the seven and a half furlongs he went up he pressed the pace last time out he weakened uh, versus a solid group of sixteen thousand dollar maidens going a mile last time out he's the gelding I think should be in the first flight playing catch me if you can so uh, I put the number five pasta Giovanni on top you did go towards the seven but you had some interest also so the horse I have a third, and that is the number six, Runto Society. I did, but let me tell you a little something about Pasta Giovanni yes. first. I think I have put this horse on top maybe his last five or six <laughs> races. He's over 27 so far, but you go back and look at how he ran the last time he ran at the 12-5 level, those couple starts there, especially the one on the turf. So I, I definitely think that this will be an interesting one. I know you are, you're Italian. I'm not Italian, <laughs> but I am a, a carboholic for sure. So Pasta Giovanni was, was one that was on the bubble for me. But I did go with the six, Rontos Society in second. Uh, debuted back in October and then since he actually removed the Lasix he has shown some speed and also showed some speed since the claim moving over in to the barn of Luis Duco he had a really uh, really good race last time out only beaten three lengths and also showed some early speed this could be one that might go out to the front and be able to hold on there and, and if you notice our selections up there and you look at the board right now very early in the wagering you'll see that the number two horse up there is at nine to five and this one cataclysmic uh, from the Wesley Ward barn and we were talking just before you come on here. If you go back and look at this horse's previous turf performance uh, at this level, certainly someone you want to uh, maybe add to your ticket if you're putting an early pick five ticket together. We're trying to beat it. Uh, you saw our selections up there. In case, uh, Casey also went with the number one, and that is Woodford Channel. I did. I was trying to beat the favorite. I think that mm -hmm. the one, Woodford Channel, who is uh, five to one right now, I think this is a really live long shot out of a stakes winning mare by English Channel. One start so far, second start could improve off of that. Well, that is how we see race number one. And when we go to race number two this afternoon, four and a half furlongs, maiden special weight, fun race, two-year-old fillies, but we do have a scratch in here of number three, Lulu Laura. And uh, boy, a nice horse starting it off that we both have on top, 
interested to see this horse run, and that's the six, Bodie's Dream. Yes, Bodie's Dream, only the second fold to run by Bodie Meister. This was a $300,000 yearling purchase. Bodie Meister's first fold that ran was Dumb Meister, who ran right here at Gulfstream Park, finished third. Of course, Bodie Meister, Arkansas Derby winner, second in the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness. So very exciting to see his foals running now. Yeah, from the Todd Pletcher Bond, and uh, working pretty well up at Palm Beach Downs. Want to show you a stat on uh, Todd Pletcher, and both of us found this stat amazing. Over the last five years, with two-year-old first-time starters on the dirt, out of 301 starters, he's won 98 times, and that is a 33% win average with a 64% in the money average, and a positive ROI after 301 starts. And you know if it's Todd Pletcher, they bet it. So to have that stat, I thought that was very telling. Absolutely. I, that was really shocking for me. Uh, I thought this horse was certainly the one to beat in here. I also went with the four, Faith in Works. Uh, for Mark Cassie, Tyler Gaffleone will be aboard. This was an interesting one to me, and you put the horse third. Yeah, this one, the daughter of Here and Weaver, Lesire. Here and Weaver produces a debut, a two-year-old winners at about a 13% rate. You mentioned the connections with Mark Cassie. Three local workouts showing that. We both used the number two spice rack, a daughter of Sydney's Candy, uh, Dane Buing for Dane Kaminsky, and of the three th two-row races we won here, uh, this barn and his connections have won two of those three races. He, uh, you know, did some co freshman who's been training steadily uh, for this assignment up at Payson Parks, and those other two-year-old winners at the meeting came from Payson Park. So, uh, you know, I'm thinking this horse is going to take a lot of money in there, but uh, for sure the six. Bodie's dream will be the favorite. Yeah, definitely some hot connections and some interesting <laughs> sires in this race. I love those two-year races because you never know who you're going to see in these races yeah. when they start out. Future champions. <laughs> race number three this afternoon on the turf. Turf course is firm. Five for a long starter. Optional claimer three and up. $50,000. Uh, scratch number six horse in here. Icarito. And I know you had some interest in the horse and that's the five. Forced motion. Do you want to start with that one and show that replay or would you rather start with your four on top and and uh, that is uh, um, no secret. Uh, no, excuse uh, me, Drama Club. Drama Club was my top selection in here. But I want to talk about Force Motion a little <laughs> bit because this is a really interesting horse for me. Uh, you also had the horse yeah. in your top three. Right. He's raced one time so far. He's a fresh gelding, first time gelding, one start so far. And we can take a look at that replay a bit. Uh, he broke wide from post 10. He's the 10 horse right there. You'll see him coming through. And as they come to the far stretch, he was wide throughout. Edgar Zayas was aboard in his first start. He made a really big bid. He veered in a little bit, but that is something, uh, you know, first time starter, really interesting for him, but he just had a really tough trip. It was only a five furlong race. He made up a ton of ground. He switched leads and then just ended up taking off, winning by two lengths. I loved that first race. I loved the first time gelding angle. I thought he was definitely one to come back and improve off of that effort. He also has some really live works there. Yet you picked the four drama club. Tell me why. I did. I picked <laughs> the four drama club just because he's the more experienced in here. Uh, David Fox. Out of this horse's past performances, he's really impressed when he has not been running in a stakes race. So he's not in a stakes race here. I, I picked him to put on top. You know, getting back to Forest Motion, also off that performance, you think he's going to sit a nice trip behind the speed, too. So yep. I'm in total agreement with that selection. But uh, the horse that you have in third, I have on top of my ticket. It's I'm no secret. And I think this one should be primed and ready to uh, score after returning from the layoff. Goes up. Duels for the lead. We can finish third behind a Manhattan Dan. That was in the $60,000 Fisher Island Handicap. Mike Maker, MSCL Jaramillo in the saddle. I just thought this was the logical contender in there. I think he's the morning line favorite in the race. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, I just think he has a big shot in there. I'm, I'm going to go back and revisit Drama Club uh, when I put my ticket together. But I did use the number two in that duffel bag. It's going to compete for the $50,000 tag in this optional claimer. So you can buy him this afternoon if you have 50 grand. And uh, you feel like owning a duffel bag. This one is shortening up to 5'8, set the pace, and finish third against 75,000. Optional claim is going 7.5. But it's a previous winner at the distance, Tyler Gaffleone in the mm -hmm. saddle. Put this horse maybe somewhere on the ticket this afternoon. Yeah, Duffel Bag was on the bubble for me. Was third right behind Coping Away last time out. Coping Away, of course, won the English Channel stakes here at Gulfstream this weekend. Uh, Duffel Bag was going to run the English Channel, end up scratching out and sticking over here. He's definitely kept some good company. And I also uh, used I'm No Secret as well yeah. as you showed some speed on the turf and could be a live one in here. Let's take a short break. When we come back, well, we will show you the rain Rainbow Six ticket I put together for races of four through nine this afternoon.
welcome back. Race number four this afternoon, one mile on the turf, made in claimants, Phillies and Mads, three and up, $16,000. Uh, blinkers on, number three, Cross My Heart, and a little later on, our track announcer, Pete Aiello, will be up here to update you on all those scratches, jockey changes, and everything else you need to have a winning day here. As I mentioned, uh, we're gonna quickly show you my Rainbow Six ticket this afternoon. Went three deep in here, what I think the three logical horses, two, four, and eight. You see three, three, two, four, and in the last race, I went I singled Finney's white shoes. I thought that was a pretty good performance. So uh, let's see if we can get through this $43.20. Uh, we're starting anew this afternoon and uh, been betting this thing uh, hot and heavy all along. So the, the, uh, the pool will start building immediately. Yeah, it'll be pretty exciting to see that as it grows. And you had two, four, and eight as your top selections here in race four. And I'm right there in agreement with you. And uh, I use the four on top, Hiram's mistress, who's adding blinkers for the first time off the claim, moving over into the barn of David Fox. That's a pretty uh, common move for him. And this is a horse that I think will be a little bit more forwardly placed here in this race. Yeah, well, let's show you what happened to him last time here back on April 17th. Actually, you'll see the beginning of the race. He got bumped hard in here. He is the number eight that thing just gets bopped back to last and you'll see it happen in here and that's him you see him just shuffle back to last and i think that's why he didn't show that usual like you said it'd be closer to the pace this afternoon to door to bring the heat should be prominently placed when stretching out to a mile today and you saw the trouble he had at the start i mean he rallied after that and he finished fifth so it you know but i thought he was compromised by that and i'm sure glad we're in total agreement here we both have the four high rooms mistress tell me about the eight magic two Magic 2. Well, so this was a race that didn't really have too much speed going on, and that's why I thought the addition of blinkers for Hiram's mistress was going to be beneficial for her, as well as Magic 2, who showed some speed in her last race. She ended up finishing second, beaten just under five lengths, uh, encountered a sloppy track a few back, and has bug boy John Cruz aboard, who has ridden her before. I thought that flash of speed that she had would help definitely help her out in this race, where there aren't too many horses who might go to the front. Yeah, she was pretty game in defeat when dueling for the lead, as you mentioned and finished second. She was 55 to one last time out. You're not gonna get that yet, but she finished right behind that repeat winner with a kiss at this level and distance. You mentioned the connections. Uh, John Cruz, he is the leading apprentice here at the spring summer meet. And Ralph Zadie, been winning the list. Seems like a race a day lately. Yeah. yeah, the old man, we met him the other day. He's a great guy, I love Ralph Zadie. So uh, a number eight magic two on both of our tickets. And of course, we also, uh, you, well, no, yeah, but you sold, used the uh, number, two, I used the number five horse in here. So I wrote the wrong number down. So so tell me about the two. <laughs> I use the two hard to picture. Uh, again, another horse that shows some speed in the last race. That was what was appealing to me. This is also second off a four-month layoff. Last race was April 29th. The last race prior to that was not since December 30th. Came back off that layoff in that April race and finished a very solid third after showing a little bit of speed. Well, I did have the five on my ticket in third, and that's all the air. This one moved to the Jessica Campatelli barn via the claim, hoping to bounce back after breaking from a tough post, post 12 showing some early interest in fading at this level in distance of performance due back at the $25,000 level, I think puts a right in the hunt with this level of competition. So we are in agreement with the four and eight. I got the five and third, you got the two. So we were in perfect agreement till I put the wrong number up. Oh, come on. <laughs> Almost. This close. This close. All right, well, let's see what we got in race five. Let's see if we, we match there. Well, race five, seven <laughs> furlongs, Phillies and Mans, three and up, non-winners of three in life, or a race in six months. That's November 11th, and I know you had some uh, pick five information you had. There. I did. Yes, indeed. I have the late pick five, which is starting here in race five. I went four deep in the first leg. The worst thing is when you get kicked out in the first leg. And then I went two, 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 two for an affordable $32. I tried to find a single. I wasn't as bold as Ronnie to be able to single in the last race, so I ended up going with two horses in each. My top selections here in race five are going to be three, six, five. I also included the four in there. Um, so my, my top pick is Pekinisa, the three. Emmy Sale Jaramillo climbing aboard, and this was what was interesting to me. So Emmy Sale Jaramillo has ridden my other two selections, the five, Starship Tammy, and the six, BL's Wagon, in both of their last races. Instead, he's going to be aboard the three, pick and Nisa, who's been second in her last two starts. She's beaten some of the other horses in this race. Five-year-old mare. Could be time for her to find the winner's circle again. Yeah, the, the problem I had, and I, I mean, I used the horse on my ticket. It would not be shocked if horse one was that one for 20 record. Mm -hmm. 
on the Gulfstream main track. So I went down, and I'm glad you added the four distinctly sweet, because that's my top pick in here. Turning back to seven uh, furlongs after stalking the pace, finishing third. That was against open competition going a mile, and I think this mare looks solid versus conditioned claimers. We mentioned this all of, as we mentioned the conditions of this race, non-winners of three races in life or a race in six months. This horse is running against horses with no condition, so it's actually uh, a step down for this horse, so I used it on top of my ticket. I'm glad you added it to your pick five ticket, and we both, you know, well, you used the number six, who I did not use, and I want to hear why, B.L. Swagger. I did. I used the number six. This is a horse that's kept some good company. Uh, Randy Prasad trains. Uh, this will be the first off the claim moving over into this barn. Uh, last race beaten about 14 and a half lengths, but if you look back prior to that, the last time that she ran seven furlongs was on a sloppy track, and she still finished a very game second. Sometimes that seven furlong, you know, we talked about this before, it's kind of like a little bit fitting. You're trying to fit sometimes a round peg in a square hole mm -hmm. or something. Sometimes it just doesn't work, and I think that the seven furlongs might work out well for BL's Wagon. Well, BL's Wagon, you know, uh, to train by, as you mentioned, Randy Prasad, a horse that is third choice in the morning line. It did not use on my ticket, but uh, you have a chance to use it on your pick five ticket, uh, or even on your Rainbow Six yeah. in the race before, if you choose to. Number five, Starship Tammy, stretching out an additional uh, furlong today after returning from about a two-month layup to finish third against 6,253 lifetime claimers going three quarters of a mile last time out. Uh, Victor Barboza got a stat here. He's three for 12, 25%. It's a limited sampling. He didn't put it up there with horses making the second start after a 45 to 180 day layoff. So uh, he's it's a small sampling. He's three for 12, but Victor Barboza doing an excellent job at the meeting, and you have that one on your ticket, too. Absolutely. I had Starship Tammy up there for the same reasons that you did. She was third last time out right behind uh, Pekinisa and Rock All Day was in front Pekinisa, my top selection, of course, in this race. Well, let's go to race six. Alrighty. This one, seven and a half furlongs turf, maiden claimers, fillies and mares, three-year-olds and upward, uh, scratch the number two, these throots, the more truth, excuse me, the seven is the favorite here, Annie O'Shiller, a horse I did not use in here. I went with the horse that, at least you have, you have it on your ticket. <laughs> I went with the number six horse who you have in third, and I'll tell you why I like casting couch. This one is stretched out around two turns that's seven and a half furlongs here at Gulfstream Park after showing speed and getting caught late that was a trio of five furlong turf sprints before the layoff it's the daughter of talent search trained by Dane Kabinsky and I think this one is the major piece of the pace puzzle in here. Coming off the layoff, I'm going with a speed trip here, and I put the number six casting couch on top of my six, six to one in the morning line, and those of you who are keeping score with my program, you'll notice is my best bet of the afternoon. All right, yeah, I agree. A casting couch so far has never run a bad one, really. And stepping up in that distance a little bit, I do think that the two turns and the seven and a half furlongs will suit her perfectly here. Uh, I used her on my ticket. I also used her on my pick five. I did not use the seven Annie O'Shiller no. on my pick no. five ticket, but I did keep casting couch as well as the three vroom, vroom, vroom. Pretty okay. fun, yeah. three, right? Yeah, vroom, right vroom, vroom. You gotta <laughs> make sure. You, you gotta make sure, you gotta <laughs> count them. I know you don't wanna get stuck with the leap year <laughs> thing like we had the other day, right? No. With, with all the math. Right. So this horse showed some speed last time out, finished a very game third, beaten only by a length and a quarter, $110,000 yearling purchase. So definitely a live one, I thought. Edgar Zayas is aboard. Yeah, now Gustavo Delgado, the trainer, and I think the Edgar Zayas doling out our speed. Uh, you know, casting couch, uh, I, you know, um, I had to use these two horses on my ticket, the one, three and the six, like you did too. The other horse I used was a horse on the inside, high heeled, who does her best running from off the pace. And the reason I used this horse, I just thought she can end up sitting a winning trip behind what should be, I thought on paper at least, a really solid early pace scenario. Dave Braddy, red hot jockey Miguel Vasquez, he won a bunch of races last week. He had a three win day. I just thought if this horse can sit off the pace this afternoon and they do up, do go up and somebody challenge casting couch like the three, mm -hmm. vroom, 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 maybe sets up now. Tell me about the horse I did not use and is the morning line favorite. I might have missed this one, and that is Annie O'Shiller. Annie O'Shiller, morning line favorite. I, I thought to throw her on. One thing that I thought was interesting, I mentioned about uh, jockeys before. This is first off the claim, Annie O'Shiller moving over into the barn of Dave Fox again. 
Tyler Gaffleone rode her in her last start. He's going to stay aboard. And I, I thought that was a little bit telling. She's adding blinkers for the first time. She had some very sharp works coming into this race, dropping down in distance a little bit to seven and a half furlongs, ran a mile and eighth last time and finished third, beating about three and a half lengths. Yeah, I've learned on numerous occasions, leaving David Forks and Tyler <laughs> Gaffleone off my ticket can be expensive. So uh, uh, once again, uh, if you think that horse deserves a spot, make sure that you do it. Uh, uh, makes sense to have him on here. Uh, race number seven this afternoon, and this one is a six furlong maiden claimer, three year olds and up with $25,000. Scratch number two in here, Tis My Way. I don't know if that was your top selection, but I knew it was one of your selections in here. Yeah, not my top selection, but definitely one of my uh, big selections. I went with the three, first time starter, North of Calhoun, who's debuting with Lasix, really sharp on the work tab and from a pretty hot barn. Yeah, let's show you some stat on uh, Terry Pompey, who's the trainer of number three, North of Calhoun, over the last time five years with first time starters. Maiden claim is four for 26, 15%. But 35% in the money with a nice solid ROI of $2.59. And Terry always does an excellent job in here. So I got that one of my ticket. And uh, if you remember my uh, Rainbow Six ticket, I think I went three deep and used this horse, making sure I would use it on my ticket. But I did go with the horse you also have in your ticket. I have it on top. And that's Menohune who should uh, come up large in the spot after responding to a drop of competition, turn back from seven to six furlongs, and the addition of blinkers with a well-meant second-place finish at this level and distance. Harry Benson, Elvis Trujillo in the saddle this afternoon. Yeah, third off, a little bit of a layoff. Ran in August, August 10th. It took about eight months off. Wasn't seen again until April 3rd. Then wheeled back pretty quickly to run on April 20th. That April 20th, the race you mentioned, a very solid second there. Beaten just by a length with that addition of blinkers. I think all of that coming together and, and the dirt. She tried out, uh, or he, excuse me, tried out the turf a little bit earlier in his career, and that was a no-go. So all of those things coming together, uh, one that I really like as well. Well, number one, can Candy Jam is a horse that you used in second on your ticket. I did. This horse is dropping a bit. Tried out the maiden special weight last time. Has run in a few uh, maiden claimings. Coming back over to the maiden claiming now. I thought that drop with the addition of how we think the pace scenario might go out over here. This is one that can sit just behind the leaders. And number 10, Moonstrick, your horse I used on my ticket. to finished third behind Menohune on the dirt back in April 20th. Uh, what we were talking about. It's going back to the main track. The, this horse hasn't run since that time. He's going back to the main track. He set the pace. He got nail late going seven and a half furlongs on the turf last out and five furlongs on the turf two back. So like, unlike Menahune, this horse has had two additional starts, albeit both of those on the turf. Yeah, this is a horse also with a lot of early speed, mm -hmm. so certainly one to keep an eye on in this race. Let's go to race number eight this afternoon. And this one is a one mile and one sixteen turf allowance optional claimer, three and up. $25,000, scratch the four, coping my way, scratch the six, titanium heart, and uh, uh, you have the number nine, Grand Isle, on your t top of your ticket. I do. This will be a bit of my long shot play. Six to one on the morning line, coming off about a two-month layoff, but had a, a very impressive victory last time out. So this horse has actually gone off as the favorite in his last three races, so I, I really liked this last race that he had. He came up really far behind, had to go wide a bit, and just really dominated. After going off as the even money favorite, proving why he was a favorite after finishing the second a couple times, Something else interesting, been running against state breads, but does have wins against open company. Well, you know, uh, shipping in from the fairgrounds, making his first start, as you mentioned, he defeated those Louisiana state bread competition going a mile in turf. But look at the trainer in here, Leo Gabriel Jr. He's three for six, 50% since returning from South Florida. And when we were walking back to the office the other day, he leaned over and said, how about those Louisiana bread? <laughs> so uh, Luca Finici will be in the saddle, and I like that pick today. I mean, I got him on my ticket, but I really like that ticket. And the bond's been going Really, really good. But I did use the five Lucky Kitten. This one is ha hoping to save a little more for the stretch run after responding in the first start after the claim by David Forks. David doing a lot of claiming lately. He's been setting the pace, finishing second, beating a length at this level and distance. It's MSCL Jaramillo, who's been riding in good form. So have the number five on top of my ticket. That is Lucky Kitten. We both have number eight, Persuasive. Yes, so 
the reason I didn't use Lucky Kitten is because I think that the five Lucky Kitten and the two Gunderson are gonna get into a bit of a pace duel on the front end. Gunderson stepping up in distance. Both of these horses have a lot of early speed. I ended up looking for a closer. That was where how I found Grand Isle. Also persuasive, has some nice closing. Uh, both of his wins have been against fellow state breads as well, as, but uh, unlike Grand Isle who has wins against Open Company, but persuasive coming out fresh off a win with Nick Juarez aboard. Tyler Gaffleone is going to climb aboard this time. Certainly one to have on your ticket. Yeah, and he rallied from off the pace, as you mentioned, the score last time out, and he should see almost that same exact pace scenario that afforded him that victory last time out. Ronnie Werner, as you mentioned, Tyler Gaffleone, uh, and I did, I used the eight for those exact reasons mm -hmm. in there. I just thought maybe the five lucky kitten was a little faster than Gunderson to maybe get out there and go, and it looks like I got a bit of a speed thing going on this <laughs> afternoon, especially <laughs> on the turf, and uh, you also used number one, and that is stock. I did, for the reasons I just mentioned. Here's one that can sit just behind the leaders, a little bit of a long shot. This will be uh, the second start for the barn of Maria Burrell with stock. Let's go to our final race on the card, one mile and one sixteenth on the turf. These are claimers three and up, non-winners of two in life. 30000 down to $25,000. One scratch in here of the number nine horse. And uh, here's where I singled my horse. If you remember my Rainbow Six, you have it on your ticket. You went too deep. And now we're talking about Vinnie White Shoe. So let's go back and show you this horse's performance. I thought it was pretty uh, nice. Uh, you'll see this horse turned it for home. And he is the number three that day. And he is really, really wide coming around the turn. And, and I just thought off that performance, you know, he, he ran really well. He, you know, he, he was sitting on a winning performance, I thought. If you look where he is out there, so uh, Red Hot Trainer Todd Pletcher starting to win races in bunches. Edgar Zayas in the saddle today. Yeah, a very impressive performance there, beaten just by a neck. He did break his maiden on the dirt in his debut, then switched over to the turf and has had two really solid performances there. This one right mm -hmm. here, as you said, winning performance, just a little bit too much to do. I ended up using him in second. My top selection was right next door, the three Bolente. $550,000 two-year-old purchase. If you go back to find uh, his winning performance, won by three quarters of a length back in January here at Gulfstream at the seven and a half furlongs has been stretching out since, but does have the ability to show a little bit more speed than Vinnie White Shoes. Yeah, trained by Mark Cassie, Tyler Gaffleon, once again in the saddle there. And uh, we both used the number eight Ransack. Yeah, another one for Todd Pletcher. He's got two live ones in this race, it looks like. And we have both of them on here. A lot of distance pedigree here by Pioneer of the Nile out of Salome, an AP Indy mare. Coming off a of victory last time, it's been the favorite the last two, won by a length. Emmy Sale Jaramillo will climb aboard for the first time. Yeah, and he looks like he has a pretty good setup here. I'm talking about Todd Pletcher. The Ransack looked like he's a stalk speed type, and you saw that uh, last performance by Vinnie White Shoes likes to come from off the pace. But as we do uh, ad nauseum, you remember the longer price of the young couple entry somehow has a chance to uh, maybe win it in here. Yeah, there you go. Well, Sometimes you really can't go wrong betting Todd Pletcher. No, <laughs> that's for sure. So that is how we see the action here on Wednesday afternoon, a nine race card. Uh, we're going to turn it over to, what's that guy's name again? Pete. Pete, maybe Pete. Pete. Hi, yeah. Pete. Hi, Pete. He's ready to come. <laughs> we'll be back in a couple of minutes.